Hello everyone, it's Jeff. Welcome back to my video. This one is the next to last episode of my top 100 list, top 100 albums list. Uh, albums covered in this video will be numbers 20 through 11 as we're counting them down. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I want to say before I get to the list here as, as quick as I can babble is that I've Looking back over the list as I've been making it, I know it's very classic rock heavy with a little bit of jazz here and there, a little bit of metal here and there. Uh, the only country album is um, uh, the Johnny Cash one. I think that's the only country one that I've got in there. But uh, yeah, um, the reason for that it doesn't this list doesn't completely represent all of my musical tastes um the last new vinyl album that i bought in a record store in 1989 was this one here big daddy by john mellencamp this is not on my list i'm just showing this this is the i still have it um in record stores back in the late 80s there was a push by CDs to take over the market and replace vinyl records, obviously. And as the 80s went on, you know, the, the CD section started growing, 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 until it was almost even. This is, I'm going off my personal experience and memory. This could be different for everybody. I, I don't know. But uh, by the late 80s, 87, 88, you know, it was kind of 50-50 still sort of between albums and, and CDs and I think the only thing that kept albums in the game was that they were cheaper um, and it was really probably about 1989 I'd say where the um, it was the tipping point where all of a sudden it seemed that all of the final albums shrank and got pushed back into the corner and the whole store was uh, CDs and then of course all, along the walls you still had cassettes but even those were starting to die out and for a poor high school graduating high school student transitioning into being a poor college student you know paying $9.99 for an album having to essentially pay you know $18.99 for a CD you know for, for the same music just on a different format um, I mean, even, even on sale, they were probably, you know, still fifteen ninety nine, sixteen ninety nine. that I basically got priced out of them, out of the music market for a few years there because, uh, I, I didn't get my first CD player till 88 and I only had, you know, a handful of CDs here and there that I would get as gifts and, uh, it just, uh, it doesn't necessarily reflect my tastes, just these, it's just what I've had the ability to buy. And I, I never really got into CDs that much. I mean, I know a lot of these here that you see back here are mostly my wife's. I mean, I have, I have uh, another rack, a smaller one over here of my CDs. I mean, I, I still bought them, but only if it was something that I absolutely had to have, you know, my experimental drive like oh I wonder what this sounds like oh I wonder what that sounds like it was gone because there was no there was no really no way to, to get them cheaply that's why I had no sympathy for the record companies when they were crying poor when Napster broke and in the late 90s through the early 2000s I had no compunctions about downloading music as I could find it and store it and I've got probably 50 or 60 gigs of music on my computer downstairs you know and, and a lot more modern music ended up being on the computer uh, compared to a physical format which like I said I was kind of forced into it I uh, don't really like it but there you go so I know that this list is very old music heavy very classic rock music heavy but like I say it's it's just the music I 
just happen to own on that format. I could show you screen after screen of digital files, but where's the fun in that, right? Not saying that all this music is bad, but I just wanted to explain a little bit that this doesn't necessarily reflect my complete taste because I've, I've watched other lists and other videos and, and people putting albums up and then be like, oh yeah, that would go on my list if, if I owned it on vinyl or even on CD, which I don't. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, not to justify anything, just it, it was kind of bugging me a little bit. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm a little more than just a classic rocker. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm a dyed in the wool classic rocker, don't get me wrong, but in fact, let's get right to the list. Speaking of classic rock, my number 20 album is Led Zeppelin 4. Uh, speaking of cassettes, I had all the Zeppelin albums on cassette back in the day. Back when I first got my Walkman, I would stick it in my, uh, my gym bag when I was in high school, during homeroom and whatnot, I would sneak those little headphones out and, and secretly listen to albums like this. Um, <clears throat> what can you say about Led Zeppelin 4? I think pretty much everybody knows this album. Uh, this was the reissue from a couple years ago. I think, uh, I think these were Jimmy Page supervised reissues of the Led Zeppelin catalog on vinyl again. Uh, yeah. And I, and I didn't have this at the time, so when I saw that these were coming out, I was salivating for them. So, uh, this is, sounds great on vinyl, obviously. What can you really say about Led Zeppelin 4? It's my number 20 album. Uh, number 19 is a CD of West Side Soul by Magic Sam. If you... We're looking for a prototypical 60s blues album that showcased the Chicago sound of blues. I think you could do pretty well by listening to this album. And going back, everything seems to be relating to earlier stuff by me. Going back to the uh, contest entry I did for H2 Vinyl when I talked about the Blues Brothers, how that influenced a lot of my music tastes early on. I remember Jake uh, dedicating Sweet Home Chicago to the late great Magic Sam when they were doing uh, their big show on Lake Wazabamani, the Palace Hotel Ballroom. And of course, little 10 year old me is like, who's Magic Sam? And I eventually found out. And this is a great album. I mean, uh, Magic Sam, great guitarist, gone way too soon. I think he only released two albums, maybe three, before uh, dying suddenly. But yeah, West Side Soul by Magic Sam. This is a great, great album. And when people talk about Chicago blues, listen to this album. This will tell you everything you need to know, pretty much, in my opinion. And it's my number 19 album. Number 18 is a compilation album by The Cure, uh, Standing on a Beach, the singles. This is, let's see the track list there. This is a great compilation album of early Cure. I've always liked The Cure. I, admittedly, this is the only thing by them I have on vinyl. Um, maybe that'll change someday, but, uh, for now, this is what I've got. I'm putting it at number 18, Standing on a Beach, The Singles by The Cure. At number 17 <clears throat> is my, one of my favorite guitarists of all time, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, this is his album, In Step. This was one of the final ones that I needed to complete my vinyl collection of his albums. I used to own this on CD originally. And this is a great, great, great album. Can't say enough good about it. I mean, this was kind of uh, Stevie Ray's comeback album. Uh, I guess you could say after uh, getting uh, clean from drugs there in the later 80s. 
and he comes back with a vengeance in this album. I mean, uh, The House is a Rockin', Crossfire, Tightrope, Let Me Love You Baby, Travis Walk, that's just side one. Killer, killer album. Uh, it was a little bit hard to come by. I know we have a lot of reissues these days, and I, I really wish that these albums would get remastered and re-released. I would buy them all again. So, uh, I'm going to have to pause this video. Hold on one second. Okay, we're back. The doorbell was about to ring. The delivery man was here, so I just paused the video real quick. Uh, I left off at number 17. Here we go to number 16. This album... Uh, I have two, actually I have two copies to show you. It's a rare, a rare album that I have two copies of. Uh, I bought this version of the white album with the grayscale lettering on there. It's not embossed anymore on this uh, pressing. I bought this in 1985 at Wind Records in Oaklawn, Illinois. Which is where I live now. I live in Oak Lawn too. I didn't, I didn't really uh, move very far. <laughs> I didn't grow up in Oak Lawn, but I, I ended up living in Oak Lawn, which is about five minutes southwest of Chicago. So that's why if you ever hear me say Chicago, it's just easier because everyone seems to know where Chicago is compared to Oak Lawn. But anyway, back to this. I bought this in 1985 when I was just discovering the Beatles. And... While it's not a perfect album, it's pretty close for a double album. I mean, of course, you know, you've got dogs on there like Revolution 9. You know, there's a, there's a couple others that probably could have been cut. But it's the Beatles, for God's sake. I mean, what, do you, what can you say about the Beatles? This was a, this was a rainbow label repressing. And about 30 years later, I was at an estate sale, and I came across an older version of the White Album, which, if you can see the letters there, it is, it's embossed. It's not a lettered copy, but it is an Apple Label copy. Let me show you that here. And I just wanted it just because it was Apple label. Uh, this one is, is pretty well beat up. It still has that moldy smell to it slightly. It, it must have got some moisture exposed to it at some point in its life. But the records were mint. I, I barely even needed to clean them and it, they sound great. Um, is one better than the other? I don't know. But uh, as, as far as the record itself goes, I had to put another Beatles album in here, and although I know Sgt. Pepper gets a lot of love, it's it's really not my favorite album. It's it's usually their later stuff. It's it's this album here, and Abbey Road, and uh, Abbey Road was much further down the list than this one. So this is my what is it? My number sixteen album, the White Album by the Beatles. <clears throat> uh, this number fifteen selection. I don't know if I'm going to get some flack for it, but I didn't really, like I said, I'm, I'm a little bit limited by what I own, and I wanted to put more down by this artist, and it's tough when you don't have the records to show. So I'm going to show this, and hopefully you guys will forgive me, but this is the Biograph box set by Bob Dylan. Uh, this is, here's the, it's a five record set, and the way it's laid out, like each side almost has a, has a sort of a theme to it, some of them do, most of them do, and, uh, basically this covers, you know, his career, about the first 20 years of his career pretty well, from, uh, 62, I think the newest songs are from... 1981 and uh, hold on I gotta pause this one more time all right we're back again sorry about that uh, <clears throat> as far as as Dylan goes there's a lot that I wanted to include 
that I just, just plain don't own. So even though this is a five record set, I'm entering it here on the list because I've got double albums on here. I've got even a triple album on here. And I'm hoping I won't get uh, killed for it just because this is a box set compared to an album. But this also, I think this was also one of, this was like the beginning of the wave of box sets that started in the 80s. This kind of started that trend. So I guess in that regard too, Dylan was a trailblazer for better or worse. But uh, the music here, like I said, it, it covers all of, just about all the highlights of the first 20 or so years of his career. And Dylan's just too big of an artist. I, I like him too much to just leave off with only one album on the list. So I had to put this on here too. Biograph by Dylan. I hope you forgive me. <laughs> I guess. At number 14 is by the Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed. Again, another classic, classic rock album. Don't really know what else to say to it that hasn't already been said. It's got my favorite Stone song on here ever, which is Gimme Shelter. And really, everything on here is just a Stone classic. So, and I know uh, Billy, Billy Hurst, you still haven't listened to this yet, but I know you're going to. I trust you. Don't worry. <laughs> I think you'll like what you hear when you when you play this for the first time. It's like me with metal. I'm, I'm just discovering a lot of this stuff too. So we all have our own things that we're uh, knowledgeable at more and knowledgeable at less. So uh, for me, this I put this at number 14, Let It Bleed by the Rolling Stones. At number 13 is by David Bowie, Low. I, um, again... He's another <clears throat> artist that's just too good to, to leave off the list with only one album. And this is the first one. You'll be seeing another one of his still in the future. Uh, this is actually, I think this was, this is an RCA International pressing. It's a, I think this is from Germany. And the sound on this is really, really good. But um, as far as... Um, the music goes. Uh, this is the first album of uh, Bowie's uh, Berlin Trilogy. I know this has been a hugely inspirational album to a lot of artists since it's come out, rightfully so. And um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of adjectives for these records as we go because it's we can only say things are awesome so many times. But for all of these that I'm showing now, it, it, everything is it's really true. David Bowie's Low is my number 13 pick. Two more. Number 12 is Abraxas by Santana. This is... This isn't an original gatefold, but I think it's a second pressing. Um, this is pretty much the quintessential Santana album to own. Uh, Black Magic Woman is on here. Oye Como Va is on here. Uh, geez. The, the whole thing is just a classic listen. Um, everything you need in Santana is here. And it was one of his biggest hits, rightfully so. Um, and it's my number 12 album, Abraxas by Santana. And now for something slightly different. My number 11 album is, I'll just uh, give the spoiler right now, it's going to be my highest ranking jazz album. And it's, I better take it out of the sleeve, there's too much glare. It's In a Silent Way by Miles Davis. Um, this is a reissue. And <clears throat> this is a very uh, quiet album, so I would think that unless it was painstakingly cared for, and very very clean you'd have a it would be very distracting to have um, background noise on this album because it's so moody it's so quiet it's so uh, it puts you in that kind of far out mood 
it, it's very difficult to explain. I, I like this one even a little bit more than Bitches Brew. Um, as he heads into that fusion direction. Um, the first uh, side is just one song called uh, SHH slash Peaceful. And uh, yeah, this is this came out in 1969, I think. And uh, it marked Miles Davis's turn towards a, a more of a fusion direction. And it's just a great, great album. I've listened to this several times. I, I got this late last year. And um, I've listened to it, geez, I don't know how many times. This was the first album I played on my new turntable. And I was really blown away by the sound. So, yeah, I really, really like Miles Davis. And listening to his stuff keeps me in that jazz frame of mind to make me want to explore more. So, my number 11 album is uh, In a Silent Way by Miles Davis. Fantastic album. There you have it. Uh, there's only 10 left. Those will get covered in the final episode of this series. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. I've had a flood of new subscribers. Thank you for that. And I have a contest going on right now, if you're interested, called Crazy Eights. Uh, tune into my channel. You can find it there. Um, get the instructions and make yourself a quick video and get into the contest. So I will see you guys later. Peace.